30 Minutes with Ron. Hello, my name is Ron Gagliardi, and I'm the host of 30 Minutes with Ron. And this evening, we have another very special guest. I mean, not that all of the guests are special, but this guest is really special. Her name is Hannah Jung. Hannah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So I'm sure that the people in our audience are wondering, well, what does Hannah do? Are you, uh, I don't know, you could be a businesswoman, you could be a uh, doctor, what are you? What do you do? I'm a director, executive director of the Voice of Art Gallery in Cheshire. Where is it located in Cheshire? Uh, it's uh, right near Town Hall and next to Cheshire Academy. And the address is? To Town Center Plaza in okay. Cheshire. Because yeah. our, our viewers may in fact want to go to this gallery. Sure. Because it features your art, also the art of some of the members. Right. And not only just members, but also invited artists. Invited artists. Yes. That's right. Can't forget them. Right. Okay. So, just so they understand, the viewers understand, mm -hmm. we have an artwork over here. Right. It's different than the one that we normally have. Much better than the one that we normally have. What do you Because <laughs> this is by you. Right. Okay. It has a title. The title is? Turquoise Love. Wow. Yes. I never knew that. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about it. What is, what is the material, the, what is the paint that you use? Uh, oil painting on canvas. Um, and a lot of people think I'm just an abstract artist. And uh, this one, can, you can call it uh, abstract landscape because it has some imagery type of um, like clouds, water, and uh, light. Um, kind of you can feel like it's a sunset um, and the reason why I said the turquoise love it's uh, it's not like a really dark sunset or you know it's a kind of in between you know you, when you uh, the sky turned to kind of purple and pink and you know all kinds of amazing colors mm -hmm. um, this is something that I feel like uh, the heaven comes down and kiss the earth um, and that's how I feel. Um, first time when I started painting this kind of uh, landscape, it's more like a spiritual landscape, and it's like ex you know expressing my own feeling and about my journey and what I believe in, and I hope that my viewers can uh, share my feelings together. And whatever they you know reacted to it, I'm I welcome to it. And um, so. Uh, yeah, that's that's why you know the water and the sky. It, to me, this is something that like a foundation of life, in um, and like you know, kind of the, the kiss is like a breath of the life, and mm -hmm. just like your source of life or something. You know, that's how I felt. So. All right. Well, <laughs> now you do a fair amount of these because I know there's a very large group of them at the gallery. Not always on display, but on the walls around the gallery. Yes. How many paintings have you done of this style, approximately? Like this style? Yes. I started about two years ago, and I don't know, probably um, 30 mm -hmm. pieces. And do you call it abstract art, impressionist art? Abstract landscape. Abstract landscape. Yes. Okay, now I understand that you occasionally enter these into art shows in different places. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some of the ones that you've entered and what's happened when you've gotten them in there? Um, yes, um, I, well, I've been exhibiting um, um, since I came to Connecticut 2000. Um, my first show began in 2003 at the Bushnell and uh, some other major um, shows at the Silver Mine Guild Art Center in Chish um, <laughs> New Canaan and, and some are from the uh, Korean Embassy in DC. Uh, and recently I have in a paint and clay club in New Haven. Um, you and won a prize. Uh, yes, I had the second best prize with their purchase of a permanent collection. And uh, also, I, I just recently finished um, 
open show at this uh, Samagundi uh, club in New York City. Um, it's one of the oldest uh, um, prestigious art club in the United States, and so I'm honored to be there. And they gave me awards, uh, Allied Artists of America or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and yes. Someone bought your painting. Someone, one of actually artists who participated in the show purchased my work, so it was very honorable. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> quite a cool. Yes. Excellent. When other artists really honor your work, it, it's more, I think it's more, uh, especially when they have their own some journey and express, um, and they can share, they can see something through my work, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Otherwise, usually uh, when people buy my work, and a lot of people says like, oh, I love your work, the purple color, perfect for my kitchen, <laughs> dining room, or my couch, or, you know, and people have a little more, uh, some depth of understanding and still love it, that's, that's great. And so when you sell an artwork, obviously you know the person who purchased it. Mm -hmm. Do you keep a list of the people? You like to know where your children are? I love to know, yes, and yeah. that's, yeah. Okay, now at the gallery, mm -hmm. let's talk about the gallery a little bit. Okay. It is a nonprofit organization. Correct. Okay. Um, what's the benefit to that? A benefit to I mean, it's, be is a it, nonprofit? It, yeah. Is, does it help, help you to get places, help you to get people to know you? Um, I think it, it, it benefits for the business aspect. Like, you know, running gallery nowadays, it's very, very uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everybody would understand after 2008, a lot of galleries in New York City, Chelsea, Soho area actually closed down and, you know, big uh, art business, um, you know, had got the attack after that, you know, mm -hmm. the financial uh, crisis. Um, so actually when I said, when I first time I start up this uh, business, a few people really concerned and saying, you know, this is not the place you can sell artwork. <laughs> uh, but, you know, my purpose was not like a selling either my work or somebody's work and make a living out of it. It's more, um, I want to set a stage, like a first stage for um, many local artists mm -hmm. that, um, what I believe, you know, what this organization can support in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, I got to know uh, Art Place, Joan Plesk, the director, uh, 2003, with my teaching opportunity there. And since then, I was always involved with the many, many uh, local artists in Cheshire, around the Cheshire, um, and knowing their life, what, you know, how they, you know, surviving or opportunities or whatever, you know. And um, I myself was uh, struggling between real job and, and <laughs> dream job. <laughs> and, you know, um, and um, one thing I noticed was there are many people who are looking for the opportunities, but there seems like they're not, uh, have, uh, they don't have a you know, professional gallery setting. Mm -hmm. And um, so I question what if there is one? Um, and just uh, you know, get to know about what nonprofit organization can do, whether there are some uh, advantage being a nonprofit and uh, possibly more protect um, some financial risks mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully some people who can understand what I want to do or where I'm going and can support with their own little bit of benefits as well. So I, th I thought that it could work for artists and viewers and some business so that's that's what I 
wanted to create. That's what you're going for. Yes. Well, the title, The Voice of Art, Right. I mean, you're saying that art speaks to the world and speaks to people, mm -hmm. and you want to help it with its voice to reach far places. Right. And actually, because the name, I, I, I was misunderstood a few times. A few people stopped by for a voice teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make sure this is a, the voice of art, that art that speaks and influences and heals. Um, so um, any any can be art, you know. Any any artist, you know, deserves to, uh, you know, have respect and their creativity. But what I want to, you know, s support and create uh, the atmosphere through this place is that art that actually uh, live, uh, breathe on your life and influence what you think, how you live, and uh, possibly can deliver some healings um, physically, mentally, you know, known, unknown, you know, mm -hmm. chronicle or not, you know, any kind of, just from my, you know, teaching experiences, uh, that's something that I really wanted to um, bring in. <laughs> So, well, you yeah. mentioned teaching. I'm so glad you did because okay. the gallery is not just a place to display mm -hmm. art. It's a place to make art. Right. So you give classes. Right. So I, the, the legal business name is The Voice of Art INC, but um, it's a gallery and studio. The reason I put together uh, in one place, because uh, when you have a gallery, if you just show the artwork, only the people who might be interested in viewing the work and they will come and uh, it may be a little too challenging and uh, knowing that a lot of local artists here still, you know, looking for some learning opportunities and, um, and have some like a gathering place, um, I is, uh, you know, provided some art classes, workshops for the local artists, like amateur artists, um, um, so that they can learn from any other invited artists to work, you know, demo or workshops. And, uh, and in that way, we also have some little bit of a sustaining income, mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah, have some income. Yes, because I don't want invited artists to come and couldn't, in case, you know, can't sell anything, then they just have that, you know, um, you know, a lot of investment on time and their finances. So I know from my own experience, that's why I wanted to have this right. combination. Okay, so you give workshops. Uh, one of your workshops was recent with photography. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, um, our one of our members, um, Mark Batista, um, he came to uh, find me um, at the gallery and because um, he was also looking for the opportunity and so he was so excited to um, find out about us and he's our teacher, uh, West Haven Public School, our teacher himself and also artist and um, really, you know, pursuing his professional uh, career, uh, really working so hard and um, and um, he's a painter and photographer, so um, he offered this workshop for many uh, other local, you know, photographers, amateur artists that can learn from him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we had a very fun, actually Ron was one of a model for that portrait class, so he did. <laughs> <laughs> so we can share that picture. Oh, geez. I got some. Don't so. do that. <laughs> yeah. So now he's also a member of the Sao Gundi Club. Right. So he's the one actually also recommend me to uh, submit my work. And see, that's something that I never thought about. Many, you know, artists can help each other when you have the, um, you know, through this organization, I could, uh, you know, find some artists that can we can support and they can bring their experiences, their information and we share. Um, so I, I got help from him a lot too. Yeah. So. Now one of the uh, photographers that I remember meeting mm -hmm. uh, was George Fellner. 
Oh, yes. And by the way, George is actually working on the Czech Republic Library right. renovation, I guess they're calling it. He's, so he's an architect. So the library is his client. Right. Yes. Okay. And he's from East Haddam. East Haddam, yes. So he what travels a long way to get there for his job. Right. But he also comes to the gallery. Right. And he entered two artworks in the recent show. Right. And what happened? He got the best in show. Um, his work um, was, you know, incredible. Um, just... Uh, Kind of challenging the viewers if it's uh, the medium itself, if it's a photography or painting or um, is it abstract or it's a realistic, you know, it, it's it's something that uh, questioning all this edge mm -hmm. um, of like modern art. And so. well, I hope I won't break the surprise, but when if you do get to come to the gallery uh, and you see George's work, uh, it looks abstract. And it's hard to tell what's going on right. and what he did with it. Was it a painting? Was it a photo? It looked like an abstract painting, yeah. actually. But it's actually a close-up of petrified wood. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> so you can find art in a lot of different places. Right. You can even find it in a close-up of petrified wood. Right. Yeah. And so you also do uh, workshops with other styles of art. Like there was one that you were planning with uh, Chinese brush art. Yes. Um, this is something that I'm so honored to uh, provide, offer mm -hmm. once in a while. Um, this is actually the uh, how I began teaching in the United States after, um, you know, study grade program and someone came up to me say, hey, you, you look like Chinese. <laughs> I'm actually South Korean. Um, we share the same, same the foundation of uh, ink painting. So I learned this since I was a kid. Um, and so someone said, you know, you could uh, teach this in 2002. Since 2002, I traveled all over Connecticut. Um, some colleges, some, you know, art guild or um, any kind of art organization that invite me. And, you know, I offered um, and I presented the workshops and classes or I'll just demo. And there are so many people who are, you know, culturally educated and enthusiastic about learning about this um, unique art form. Mm -hmm because there are so much in the depth of philosophy there. So, yes. Well, I remember seeing in the brochure something about four men or four gentlemen. Oh, four gentlemen. Yes, I was a little confused on that. Can you okay. give us a little explanation? Well, okay, four gentlemen is a literal uh, translation of a Chinese character, four and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's actually could call um, like a nobleman or, um, you know, uh, aristocratic um, young man. Um, these are um, uh, for education, uh, you know, the Confucian, uh, Confucianism, mm -hmm. Confucian, yeah. um, the Chinese, you know, the uh, moral education for the young man, what young noble man to grow, uh, you know, become um, <laughs> culturally Cultural, educated, yeah. educated okay. loyal to the kingdom and, you know, um, so using those uh, four uh, uh, symbol, symbolic objects from nature, which is a bamboo uh, orchid and um, chrysanthemum and uh, plum blossom with all different kind of meanings with the seasonal objects. And ah. they, when they learn art, they also learn about those meanings and they meditate on those. So art is not just for uh, creativity, um, just, you know, activities or anything, hobbies. It's more really for their liberal art education, for their mind. When you have a group of artists in. You have it call it an artist club. Oh yes, we we provide the artist club uh, for the uh, local artist. Um, this is not for like instruction. Uh, you know, provided a class. It's for more um, self-directed uh, projects. Uh, you bring your own supplies and. Just we provide the uh, studio settings, and you can just mingle with other artists, and you talk and share. Um, in that way, you just build up your relationships with each other, and um, perhaps you can share some thoughts. Um, when you just look at somebody else's work and how they do, 
uh, it really uh, affects how you think mm -hmm. and how you develop your own ideas. So um, that's what we, you know, wanted to promote. Um, the artists that come together and learn, you know, once a week together, and yes. <laughs> All right, and uh, okay. there's also something that's very popular these days called a paint night. Yes. <laughs> you've had a few of those? Yes, we did. All right, um, what happens at a paint night? Okay, um, our paint nights, well, f uh, two years ago, uh, I heard from um, one of my friends, um, show me picture and she said like Hannah you know this is what I did and I said oh that's cool and how did you do that and this is from paint night I'm like what is that and explaining what she did it, it was literally just tracing art actually uh, you know kind of coloring book because they already prepared the imagery ah. on the canvas and what you do is you know mixing fill colors in. and just fill in ah. but it gave her so much of hope and joy and you know some sort of encouragement and i was like wow this is amazing how people can appreciate this <laughs> and being an artist and never had any you know uh, problem with the, you know painting something or drawing something and I just thought about it, okay, if this is something people want, there should be a reason for it. And, um, but, you know, being an artist and our teacher and learned a lot of our history background, I rather, maybe perhaps we can uh, provide something that more educational, mm -hmm. provide some uh, abstract art, that you know people can learn about it so we we've been focusing on some more modern art after 1900 uh well actually including monet so it's in 1880s so um just uh, showing some art with some slideshow shows so that they can learn about their background why these artists have this kind of crazy movement or um, and then we reflect on our own ideas so nobody makes exact same paintings and that's what we um, aim for mm -hmm. so yes so now I understand that you're hoping to get some of your paintings into local businesses as kind of like a rental agreement so that the, the place gets a little spiced up with some good art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, since I was looking for art shows, um, you know, for almost 20 years, I noticed a lot of a business like a fancy restaurant in Madison Beach. You know, they offer artists having shows and um, you know, there are some places that are known for those, um, but but it's not from the like a gallery aspect. So um, uh, I was thinking, you know, being a community in Cheshire, there are so many medical offices and financial, you know, institutions and um, many places that might help uh, when you have some artistic uh, environment. Um, and that will give artists also have opportunity to show their work. Um, and that way they were just mutual benefits mm -hmm. and hopefully artists can sell or put their names out with their artwork um, and make a more joyful community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and um, <laughs> hopefully some business, you know, owners or, um, uh, the uh, managers, whoever, understand what we try to do, and hopefully we can have uh, some sponsorship with them too. Right. So. And it is a nonprofit. Right. This yes. is nonprofit again. So it's a, it's not every nonprofit has this benefit. This is a 501c3, tax exempt. So when you sponsor us, it will give you tax uh, deduction, de deduction yeah. benefit. Okay. Now, I just want to say something to the viewers uh, about buying art. I guess buying art is not on everybody's, high on everybody's list that they really need. Like, you know, like, I need mm. some milk, I need some bread, and I got to <laughs> buy some art. That's, that's right. not really how it works. Right. But it's something that is, is enriching to the soul. And um, as, a, as a minor artist myself, I'm, I'm not in the category of this kind of wonderful artist, uh, but... It, it's, it's good for artists to feel like their work is appreciated. 
And one of the ways that can happen is for people to buy their works. Mm -hmm. And so I, I urge our viewing audience that sometime in the next 10 years, go out and buy some original <laughs> art. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. And, and one of the places you might go is the voice of art. Even Amen. just to, to go in there and look around. It's enriching to the person that goes in there for that experience. Nice. Now, we're getting close to the end of our show. Okay. I know it's gone by so quickly that you can't believe it's almost a half hour. <laughs> Is there anything much. that you wanted to talk about that I forgot to mention? Just as you said, you know, it's not something that they need for their daily life, but you may not, you know, think, you know. Uh, but um, to me, from my experience, um, there are people and uh, purchase my work because they got to buy it. They mm -hmm. got to have this. And that's what they said. I look forward to see your work every morning. I had the old couple later. I found it. I did not know who bought my piece. And eight years later, they found me. And they said, I want to know who, she, who this artist oh, was. Great. So we finally found you. And they said, we put my work, uh, uh, we put your work in our uh, above our uh, bed. And every morning, we wake up and see your work. And I'm like, see, so this is not something that you go like a shopping and pick up something, right. you know. It's something that it means to you. And, and hopefully that's what we want to bring, you know, the artwork here. And hopefully, even though you don't buy it, it's, it's you know. just get to see it. Right, just right. to see it. It's a free, it's open. Yep. Oh, by the way, the gallery hours, Tuesday through Friday, noon to 6 o'clock. And Saturday, uh, 11 to 5. All right. We open Saturdays. So right. before lunch, well after said. lunch. Very good. <laughs> thank All you. right. Thank you, Hannah, for thank appearing you. on the show. And thank you for tuning in.